Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Setting up Navigraph for your first time, coming up next on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Today's video is proudly sponsored by Navigraph. Get all of your flight planning, charts, and weather in one easy to use application. VR users take advantage of the InSim toolbar menu for seamless VR integration. Update all of your third-party aircraft as well as Microsoft Flight Simulator to the current AirAct cycles. Pick up yours today at Navigraph.com. Links down in the description. Navigraph charts intended for flight simulation only, not for navigational use. Welcome back, everyone. In today's episode, we're going to go over the entire setup process for Navigraph. We're also going to go over the various downloaded applications and how they're going to interact with your PC or your simulator. Lastly, we'll go over the various settings inside of the Navigraph chart application just to show you how to get everything set up in there for your flight planning. Now, we're not going to go over how to use the Navigraph chart application. No, God! Nor are we going to go through any of the flight planning. This is mainly to get everything set up for you and so that you will have all the integration into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Good answer. Good answer. Like the way you think. If you have any comments or questions along the way, please post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. And if the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All the links for today's video will be down in the description, so be sure to check those out. The first thing that we need to do is to go up to the very top of the Navigraph website to the downloads page. Once we click this, this will give us many different applications to download. So let's go over each of these. At the very top, we have the charts application. This is the application that everyone sees on YouTube videos where people are planning their routes or looking at their charts. This is going to be the main application you're going to use for all of your charts and flight planning. In this section, we have many different ways in which we can download the charts application. We can either use a cloud version. We can also store this as a desktop version on either Mac or Windows. And my favorite, we also have integration to an Android or iOS tablet. At this point, you need to decide on how you want to view the charts application. You are not set to only one or two. You can download as many as you'd like from here. So for me, I downloaded the Windows version, and all we need to do is to tick on the download button, and we'll start your download in the web browser below. Below the charts application, we have the Navigraph Hub application. This is going to be essential for Microsoft Flight Simulator. What this will do is it will allow us to update all of the third party aircrafts as well as the InSim toolbar menu and the integration into the G3000 slash 5000. Below that is the FMS data manager and we do not need this for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Below that is the SimLink application. This is going to be your middleman between the charts application and the simulator itself. So we're going to need to download this one as well. One thing that I did notice is when I started running the installation, I believe it was for the charts application, it automatically downloaded and installed the SimLink application as well. So if that does happen to you, then you do not need to manually download the SimLink application. All right, so now you've installed all three applications. Let's go over each of these, starting with the SimLink first. You want to make sure this is running when you start Microsoft Flight Simulator, so you have that connection with your Navigraph charts. So the first thing that I recommend to do is to go over to the Settings tab and make sure that you have checked Start SimLink on System Startup and automatically check for updates. So once we're done with this, all you need to do is to click the X and it will automatically put it down here in your system tray. The next application we're going to take a look at is the Navigraph Hub. This is what's going to update all of the AirAct cycles, install the Avionics plugin, as well as the InSim navigation charts 
for the NSIM toolbar menu. That's going to be very important for all the VR users. For your first time opening this up, you should see only an install button over here on the right hand side. At the top, you'll see that I do have an update for the AirAx cycle. All you need to do is simple one click and it will update or install any of the packages for us. All right, so now that you have finished updating or installing the various packages, we can now exit out of the Navigraph Hub application. Now please note that you do not need to run the Navigraph Hub application when you start your PC, nor does it need to be running during the Microsoft Flight Simulator usage. The last application we will go over today is the Navigraph Charts. Here we can view our charts, weather, and do all of our flight planning. But before we want to get into any of that, we need to set this application up specifically for our needs. And it's completely customizable. So let's get into that right now. The first thing we're going to do is head down to the settings cog in the lower left hand corner. This will open up our settings menu that you see on the left hand side. At the top of this menu, we can check for updates for any newer versions. In the general section, we can make sure that our charts application is always on top. So this way, no other application can accidentally be placed on top of it. Below that, we have an interface scale. This is really important for those of you that may sit a little bit far away from your screen, and this will allow us to scale up all of the words so that we can see them. Below that, we have our theme, and this will change either between day or night. Below that is the runway length. We can have that depicted in either feet or meters. In the mapping section below, we have an experimental feature, which is the map tilt. So if we click this and right click on the map, we can now tilt the map any way we like. Now, one thing I don't like about this, it can get a little confusing and disorienting. So I like to keep the map tilt off. Now, as you can see, we are in a non-north oriented map. So let's put this back in a north oriented mode. At the very top right, we're just going to click on that little icon, and that'll put us back in a north up mode. Below map tilt is the scaling feature. Here's where we can scale up or down any of the verbiage that you see on the map. Now, one thing that I would like to see change is on the NSIM toolbar menu for the charts application. There is only one scaling option, either normal or large. And honestly, in VR, even in the large mode, it is very difficult to read some of the letters. So it would really be nice if they added a different scaling option like they do here inside of the toolbar menu for VR. That would really help us out, Navigraph. So I hope you're listening. Below scaling is how we are going to project the map on our screen. We can either go in a globe fashion or we can use a flat map. And again, this is all personal preference. Below the map section is our moving map section. This is going to pertain to our little icon that will appear on the screen once we spawn in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we can auto start the moving map. We can also auto follow our aircraft. At the very bottom, we have the anchor point. So we can either use the tip of the arrow as where our aircraft is, or the center of the arrow is where our aircraft is located. Below that, in the chart section, here we can choose what chart mode we want to use. If we're using a standard GA aircraft or a personal Learjet, we can use the standard application or chart mode. If you're flying an airliner or a commercial jet, then we can switch over to the commercial mode. So once we're done with the settings tab, we can either hit the hide button at the top or click on the settings cog at the bottom. The last thing that we're going to go over in the Navigraph charts application is how to set up our various map overlays. So let's take a look at the top left of the map. We have four different icons, a map icon, a layer icon, a weather icon, and a user icon for our aircraft. Starting at the top, if we click on the map icon, this will bring up the various overlay maps that we can display. 
You'll notice next to some of these I have a reset button, and that is because I went in and modified the various things that are going to be displayed on each of the overlays. If you would like to switch to a different map, all we need to do is to left click on that and you will see a completely different map show up. Now let's go over the various overlays or layers that we can display. Clicking on the layer icon, you will see the various layers over on the left hand side that we can display. If we uncheck any of these layers, you will see those disappear off of our screen. So we also have the ability to change what is displayed in each of these layers. To change any of these layer settings at the very bottom of the icon menu, you will see a settings and it should be lit up in orange. We're going to click on the settings icon and all of the icons above have now turned into an orange color. That is to let us know that we are now in a user configure mode so that we can go into each of these layers and choose what we wish to display. Starting at the top, we have our navigation layers. Here's where we can turn on or off any of these layers that we want to use in our navigation layer preset. Now you have the ability to go through each of these and check what you do and what you do not want. Once you're done adjusting all the various overlays, then we want to click on the settings tab one more time at the bottom and it will put us back into on or off mode. So now we can turn on or off any of those overlays. The last icon or menu that we're going to go over today is the weather menu. If we click on that, you will notice that we have a control box that opens at the bottom of our maps. If you tap on the play button, it will now play out the current weather over a period of time, also displayed here at the bottom. The other neat thing about this control box down here is if you click on the radar tab, we can now show other various moving maps. So if we turn on, let's say, Turbulence, now we can see a Turbulence map. As you can see, this application is very, very powerful and is getting better every day. All right, folks, that's going to wrap us up for today. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below in the comments section, and I'll get right back to you. If the video helped you out, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.